Did you know that only iron can sharpen iron? Iron cannot sharpen paper. Hi, my name is Ann McNeil and I am the Master Wealth Builder, helping you to build a stronger and better life and business in every area of your life for your business. We are walking through the success philosophy espoused by Napoleon Hill in this wonderful book entitled Thinking for Rich. With my Anne's wonderful words of wisdom and my McNeil Factor insights from the philosophy. I'm talking today only to you. Yes, yes, you're my favorite subject. I say that every day. Why? It's because you're listening. That's a good reason why. But I want to encourage you to do you. How do you do you when it comes to making a decision about what it is that you want, exactly what it is that you want, whether it is that dream, whether it is that philosophy, whether it is that business, what, what is that that you really desire? How do you have a dream come true toward your desire? We're talking about the success philosophy and how do you implement it and helping you to make a decision. What I'd like to suggest that when you start making a decision, think about who's in your mastermind group. You see, because only iron can sharpen iron, iron cannot sharpen paper. So consider adding individuals to your mastermind group. We're discussing the formation of the United States and the document that created that and the individuals who formed the first mastermind group, Hancock, Lee, and the fact that they added more individuals to their mastermind group that ended up signing that Declaration of Independence. You know, that July 4th date that we often celebrate. We often celebrate. Okay, well, that's another subject for another day. I want to encourage you that as you think about what is your July 4th date, what is the date you're going to become independent in your thinking and making a decision which is going to positively impact your future, your family, your business associates, yes, and others that are totally depending upon you for their livelihood for their future. Well, let's see what the author says. We'll start with the reading. And I'm on page 154, if you're following me in the version that I'm using, but any version of the book is sufficient. The author shares that he wants us to mark well this incident of the colonies formation with Hancock, Adams, and Lee. He says, it is in the beginning of the organization of this far-flung power destined to give freedom to you and to me. The mastermind had already been organized. It consisted of Adams, Lee, and Hancock. I tell you further that if two of you agree on the earth concerning anything for which you ask, it will come to you from my father who is in heaven. The committee of correspondence was organized. Observe that this move provided the way for increasing the power of the mastermind by adding to it men from all the colonies Take notice that this procedure constituted the first organized planning of the disgruntled colonies. And he's talking about the fact that these guys were disgruntled, but you don't have to be disgruntled to make a decision. You don't have to be disgruntled to have a desire. You don't have to be disgruntled to take action on that decision and that desire. But, but, but if you are disgruntled, Will you decide to do something about that job? Will you decide to do something about that business? Will you decide to do something about that situation in your life? You know that struggle, that problem, that challenge. Uh, you know the one. 
Yes, 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 you do. You can name it. You know the struggle. But the question today is, will you add to your mastermind group? And if you don't have one, start one. But remember, when you add to your mastermind group, only iron can sharpen iron. Iron cannot sharpen paper. And very simply, what that means is that you must have like-minded and like-spirited individuals who are willing to hold you accountable at an entirely different level than you can achieve by yourself. But I digress. Let's continue with the reading. In union, there is strength. The citizens of the colonies had been waging disorganized warfare against the British soldiers through incidents similar to the Boston riot, but nothing of benefit had been accomplished. Their individual grievances had not been consolidated under one mastermind. No group of individuals had put their hearts, minds, and souls and bodies together in one definite decision to settle their difficulty with the British once and for all until Hancock, Adam, and Lee got together. And this story reminds me that in the 1980s when I formed the first mastermind group and we were together for 10 straight years during the 80s. And then we formed collectively a second and then a third and a fourth and a fifth and a sixth. And all of a sudden we realized that all of these scattered mastermind groups needed accountability and in a process and a system. And there for me began the process of organizing what I now call the McNeil Factor Mastermind System, how to start and run an effective and yet profitable mastermind group. But we needed an international organization to hold all of us accountable. This is what I wanna encourage you in. Who's holding you accountable at an entirely different level? No one? Someone? Well, consider this. Just as these colonists needed organizing, their thoughts, their minds, their bodies under one organization with one goal in mind, we all need that level of accountability and that spirit of community. Everybody seeks community, whether we want to admit it or not. Well, what about you? Who are you connecting with that's willing to hold you accountable at a different level? I'd like to encourage you to add to your mastermind group. But remember, when you do that, only iron can sharpen iron. Correct. Those individuals must be like-minded and like-spirited. But let's continue with the reading. Meanwhile, the British were not idle. They too were doing some planning and masterminding on their own account with the advantage of having back of them money and organized soldiery. The Crown appointed Gage to supplant Hutchinson as the governor of Massachusetts. One of the new governor's first acts was to send a messenger to call on Adams for the purpose of endeavoring to stop his opposition by fear. Ah, oh, here we go. Are you allowing fear and indecision to grab you? Well, if you make a decision, it can't do that. No, no, no. Fear runs. Indecision runs and it hides from a decision. So if you're dealing with fear, make a decision. Walk, walk toward it. Look at it in the face and say, come on, what you got? Tell it that. I'm serious. I do it all the time. And guess what? Somehow, some way, it disappears. Or, or something else shows up. All of it is nothing but optimization data to help you analyze it for what it is and deal with it one small step at a time. One small step at a time. One small act at a time along with your accountability partners, they are able to help you come up with another plan. And if that doesn't work, come up with another plan. And if that doesn't work, like Edison, 10,000 tries, you will end up finding another plan only if you don't quit. They didn't quit. Let's see what happens next. We can best understand the spirit of what happened 
by quoting the conversation between Colonel Fenton, the messenger sent by Gage and Adams. Colonel Fenton, I have been authorized by Governor Gage to assure you, Mr. Adams, that the governor has been empowered to confer upon you such benefits as would be satisfactory endeavor to win, he's endeavoring to win Adams by these promises and bribes, that's in parentheses, upon the condition that you engage to cease in your opposition to the measures of the government. If the governor's advice to you, it is the governor's advice to you, sir, not to incur the further displeasure of his majesty. Your conduct has been such as makes you liable to penalties of Mount Henry the Eighth, by which persons can be sent to England for trial for treason or misprison of treason at the discretion of a governor of a province. But by changing your political course, mm, 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 you will not only receive great personal advantages, but you will make your peace with the king. Come on now. Samuel Adams had the choice of two decisions. He could cease his opposition and receive personal bribes, or he could continue and run the risk of being hanged. I think that's a very good place to stop. What do you think? Because I wanna challenge you to think about the decision that you must make. Will you go to the right? Or will you go to the left? You cannot stand in the middle because standing in the middle is still a decision of indecision and inaction. Will you go to the right toward that which you desire? Or will you go to the left toward the desires of others? What did the king say? You... <laughs> will not only receive great personal advantages, but you will make your peace with the king. I suggest that there are two kings here. There's the king of kings, and then there's the little king. You must decide. Your indecision represents the little kings. Your decision to do your heart's desire is a representation of the king of kings and whatever he has put inside of you to do for you and for your family and your business. My desire is to encourage you to continue to do you. And by doing you, I wanna encourage you to continue to think and grow richer in every area of your life and your business. But also I wanna encourage you, add some additional people to your mastermind accountability group. Level up, mastermind up. But whatever you do, continue to think and grow richer with me. And as always, if you need to connect, you can reach me at annmcneil.com. But other than that, I will continue to challenge you, to do you. But today, my challenge to you is add to your mastermind accountability group. Those individuals who are like-minded and like-spirited who will pull you up to an entirely different level. You have a choice, the little king or the king of kings. Again, my name is Ann McNeil and I am the master wealth builder, helping you to build a stronger and better life and business. And as always, I will, yes, I will. I'll see you tomorrow.